Hi, it's Stu from Abacus Motorhomes. Thank you for choosing us for your motorhome hire. Uh, before you set off, there's a couple of operating instructions we want to run through with you, so let's get started. Now this model comes with two keys. You have the larger key, which flips out, that is for your ignition, but also removes your diesel cover. The remote buttons on here will operate the locks for the cab and the habitation door. The smaller key is for just the side lockers and the toilet cassettes only. Don't be tempted to use this on the habitation doors because they can fall apart and break if you're used incorrectly. All Abacus motorhomes are diesel, so you will need to refill the tanks upon your return. Uh, some models do have the additional add blue tank. Um, just be aware they generally have a range of about 1200 miles. So if you are doing more than that for your trip, you may need to refill it while you're on your journey. In the cab, you will find your handbrake is on the right hand side of the driver's seat. Your seat is also adjustable. You have the side flaps where you can adjust the height of the seats, but also the bar at the front where you can adjust the distance to the steering wheel. On the right hand side, you have your wipers. And on the left hand side, you have your lights and indicators. In the centre console, you will find your sat-nav and radio. You've also got your hazard lights in the middle. And this model is a manual transmission. The control panel in this model is up here. Simply switch it on to activate it. And then you've got this button here, which is your water pump activation. So you'll need to switch that on if you want to use taps, shower or flush the toilet. Internal lights is activated from here. Once this is on, then you can use the switches. This one here is your outside awning light, which is up on the side there. The navigation buttons here, if we scroll through the icons, we'll see the water levels. So we can check our wastewater level. We can check our freshwater level. And if we continue to scroll, we can then also check the vehicle voltage and the leisure voltage as well. Now the heating control panel in this model is the outer system. So simply switch it on and then press menu. Here you have a setting for your ambient temperature. By simply pressing the minus or the plus, you can select the heating level that you want. Below that is your hot water level. You have the choice of off, on at around 40 degrees, or you can boost up to around 55. We generally recommend about 40 degrees is more than sufficient. Here you can choose the power source that you want to select. So if you are on electrical hookup, switch that to blue, that will run off the 230 volt. If you're not on a hookup, switch it to green and that will run off of your LPG. If you are on an electrical hookup, you then have a choice of one, two or three kilowatt mains power at your choice but we generally recommend one to two. Using the cooker, it's a very basic function, but there's a couple of safety points to be aware of. If you have a glass top, be sure to lift it before you use the hobs, okay? When you have finished using the cooking on the hobs, let them cool off before you replace the glass as they can get very hot and you obviously don't want that to crack or break. Grill and oven positioned down below. You'll have your ignition point on here and then all you've got to do is open the door, switch it to the section that you want and press the button to ignite. And then again, just remembering to close that off when you're finished with it. The fridge in this model is a Dometic automatic system model, which means that once set to the auto function, it will look after itself. If you plug it into a mains on a campsite, it will run off a 230 volt. If you don't have it plugged in, it will run on the gas and any time when the engine is running, it will run on the battery. Uh, and as I say, as it's auto function, it will select the power source by itself. The vehicle comes with a TV, which has a built-in DVD player. If you wish to use either of these functions, you can simply do this by using the remote. You have the source button at the top, so you can choose between TV or the DVD function. If you're watching TV and you need to tune it, simply go to the TV menu, tab down once you get to the satellite symbol and press to confirm and then just select auto tune and that will automatically tune all the TV channels in that region. So before using the toilet, you will need to remember to pull the gray lever to the right. That will open up the cassette. Then you can use the toilet 
the blue button to flush after you've finished. And then remember, always set the grey handle back to the left, ready for the next use. Now to operate the windows and blinds, take a little bit of care with these because they can be delicate. But normally, fly screens are at the top and they just pull down. Privacy blinds at the bottom and they just pull up. To operate the windows, lift all the catches up. Push the window out to get to the level that you want it and then lock it in and like so. Before you set off, always make a mental note to close all your windows. Don't leave them on the ventilation setting, make sure they are always on a full lock to avoid any loss or damages. In the storage area of the vehicle, we've supplied you with a mains cable for 230 volt connection, hose for refilling your water supply, kit bags for breakdowns, you've got high-vis jackets, warning triangles, breathalyzers, leveling blocks, dustpan and brush, broom, awning handle, and also the tablets for your toilet. Connecting to a 230 volt power supply on a campsite, we have supplied you with the cable. Most important rule of thumb is, make sure that the lid always goes in first. Press the rest in, make sure it's secure, and close the flap down. To remove the cable, sharp pull, and replace. To refill your fresh water on this model, lift up the cover, take your well connector hose from the back, and plug the box in like so. Make sure the other end is connected up to your water supply. Once that tank is full, it will overflow from the back of the vehicle. Once that happens, just squeeze the triggers, remove it, close the cover, and return the hose back to the back of the van. To empty the grey waste on this model, simply reach underneath, remove the cover, hold the pipe steady with one hand, and then half a turn back to the left to drain the water out. Once it's empty, close it back up again, and replace the cap. Right, so to empty the toilet on this model, open the door and then lift the handle to remove from there and then you should just be able to slide the box out. If you've left it open on the inside, you will not get the box out. Once you've done that, press the orange button down to release any trapped air, any gas or pressure that might have built up inside the box. At that point, then you can take the spout around, take the cover off and tip out the contents. Once you've done that, place a blue tablet back down the neck, add a couple of jugs of water, replace the cap, close it, and return the box inside. So to refill the gas on this model, open the door. You've got two gas bottles that are inside of there. They're fully regulated. So to refill them, all you'll need to do is remove the cover, take the gun from the LPG pump, and place it over the top of the bayonet fixing. It then has a locking mechanism which will hold the gun into place. Once it's connected safely, all you do is hold the button down on the pump. That will refill both cylinders at the same time. Once it stops, it's finished. Release the gun and replace the cap like so. To use your awning on this model, first you'll need to take your extender pole, extend it out with the full range. The T-piece, will then lock into there. You can then start to unwind. And just checking that it winds out even and flush to the vehicle. Once you get it to the area that you want it, then Within here, you will find the leg mechanism. Come to this end here, there's a little thumb piece. Pull back on that. That will then remove the leg. Make sure that the foot is flat, point towards the ground, and there is a small plastic flap just on the inside of the leg. If you lift that up to about a 90 degree angle, you can then extend the leg, get it to the height that you want it, and then push the flap all the way to the top. Repeat the process on the other side, okay? At that point, you can then take the pegs and the mallet from the bag 
peg the feet down to secure it. There is also an additional storm strap if you should need to use it. We don't recommend using awnings within weather that is not fair or still as strong winds can take them over the top of the vehicle and we don't cover them on our insurance. I hope you've enjoyed the videos and the tutorials and found them useful in preparation for your hire. Uh, we look forward to seeing you. If you have any further questions or you need any assistance from us, please don't hesitate to contact us on the main number or head over to our website or drop us an email. Feel free to share with us all your experience with Abacus Motorhomes uh, through our social media pages on Facebook or Instagram uh, or head over to our website to leave any further feedback. We look forward to hearing from you.